event that you ask the security personnel, they will, without a doubt, mention the spirit of Edith Piaf or the ghost of Sarah Bernard. How many demonic rituals or masses were carried out after the establishment had closed its doors? Does the idea of spending the night in the midst of 70,000 graves appeal to you? A story is narrated to us about the ghost of a guy who had his heart shattered by a beautiful actress. This story takes place in the Alley of Dragons. Since the 29th of August in 1937, an actress named Mademoiselle Clairon has been laid to rest in this same alley. This is a terrible combination of events. The guy who was infatuated with her is believed to have been hounded by her, and she is supposed to have pushed him away and forced him to commit himself. She passed away at the age of 40, having been exiled in Paris and having been separated from her husband. She was the head of an impressive wealth. She would have left a will, which, according to the conditions of the will, would have left her riches to the individual who would remain in the grave next to her corpse for a period of 365 days and 366 nights. Although there were three tries, the ones who were unsuccessful went insane. Nevertheless, the white woman, as she was often referred as, would continue to wander across the cemetery in an effort to encourage potential prospects to approach her. There is a candidate's letter from the little town of Monmouth, Illinois, dated 1893, which is included in one of the photographs. An additional peculiar truth that would be appealing to the people who adore Dracula. There is a possibility that the Countess was a vampire. Examine the date of her death, which was 181818. In addition to the four wolf heads that surround the mausoleum, which are also symbols of vampires, the number 38 is also a sign of the mausoleum. The grave of Friedrich Chopin, a composer who was of Polish and French descent, is a stunning structure. He had his body buried in Paris and his heart buried in Warsaw because he was so terrified of being buried alive. He loved his two nations so much, but above all else, he was so fearful of being buried alive. Now that we have Hippolyte Rivail, the maestro of spiritualism, we are going to be in contact with the supernatural. Rivail was born in Lyon in 1804, and he was a spiritualist. How come you don't attach any significance to this name? He altered it to Allan Kardec, so it is now considered normal. In a prior life, when he was a druid, this would be the identity that corresponds to him. In the future, he planned to engage in conversation sessions with the person who had passed away. It was at that time that he was 51 years old, and he was planning to study and develop this approach that was coming from the United States. He is going to become the reference, and he is going to put into practice a genuine spiritualist philosophy. He is going to derive from it five works that continue to be the reference on the topic today. The clients he worked with included well-known figures like Victor Hugo and Sir Conan Doyle, who was the biological father of Sherlock Holmes. The following is a quote that is attributed to him. If you come to see me after my death, put your hand on the neck of the statue that overlooks my grave, and then make a wish. In the event that your request is fulfilled, please return wearing flowers. If you take a look at the photographs, you will see that his grave is one of the most florally decorated there is. Without a question, the most well-known ghost on a global scale is Jim Morrison, who was one of the co-founders of the Doors organization. Brett Meisner, a rock historian, paid a visit to his idol's cemetery in Paris in 1997. While there, he requested a buddy to snap a picture of him standing in front of his idol's tomb. However, he makes a startling discovery when he shows the photograph to one of his helpers during the presentation. A guy dressed in white, who seems to have a striking resemblance to Jim Morrison, can be seen in the shot, which is located behind Brett Meisner, 